On the 11th of March 2011, there was an accident in Japan. The forces of nature and humanity clashed together to create one of history's most devastating nuclear incidents, Fukushima. Recently, Netflix has released a dramatization of these events titled The Days, and that is the topic of today's episode of Nightmare Fuel. Before I get in, please consider checking out our upcoming secret project, The Horror Exchange. Exchange. There are links below. My breakdown of the days will contain spoilers throughout as I recount the deeply unsettling events of Fukushima. What we experience in the days across a limited series of eight episodes is the build up to, the handling of, and the aftermath of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. It specifically took place at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and, in terms of severity, became the joint highest event of its kind. The other? Chernobyl. The fear factor of Fukushima's presentation in the days comes from demonstrating just how bad things can get if a nuclear power station becomes damaged. As for how it was damaged, the Fukushima incident is a horrific case of an unlucky chain reaction. The plant is located by the sea in the town of Okuma, a lovely place for scenery, a terrible place for when an earthquake occurs. At 14.46, an undersea earthquake registering a magnitude of 9.0 to 9.1 surged a tsunami into life, which made its way towards the power plant. The Tohoku earthquake and tsunami is currently the single most powerful Japanese earthquake in recorded history, which in itself is horrifying to contemplate, yet it was the unpredictable power of this natural process which blended its waters with advanced nuclear technology for the worst. The force of the earthquake itself caused the active reactors to shut down automatically, and this had a massive knock-on impact to other key pieces of equipment, including generators and cooling pumps. But this was just the result of the quake. Next came the wave, which washed across the facility. We get a supremely tense scene in the days, where we see one of the workers trapped in a flooding room, barely making it out. But the rising waters combined with the atmosphere atmospheric score made this a heart-in-mouth scene. The seawater raged through the plant, causing further damage to generators and pumps. With the damage done all originating out of any human being's control, it was all downhill from here. The workers in Fukushima, the associated authorities, and those given the label of experts in their fields were all put under immense pressure, which as we see in the days was a gruelling experience for all involved physically, mentally, and both combined. I think that a huge factor which makes the days a traumatic viewing experience comes from how unprecedented the event is. Because what occurred has such a low chance of ever happening, nobody could have ever been truly prepared for it, and thus we get several scenes throughout the series where the men making the important calls, having to retain some kind of order, are totally lost. They can only make assumptions and estimations as to what happened, what is currently happening, and what will happen. Our opening narration to the entire show questions what the meaning of those days were. What was the point of it all? Why did it happen? So many unanswerable questions which over the course of time have made Fukushima a bitter mystery, and the days drives that feeling of confusion in its narrative. Those in charge ask what happens now, not knowing how to proceed. They give statements like, we haven't been trained for this situation and even more concerning, we have no way to confirm what the reactors are doing. Due to the faults with the equipment, the workers were left in the dark for a period of time, having no way to control or measure what was going on. Even when the measures are put in place to cool the reactors down, it can't even be confirmed if the reactors are cooling, and the so-called experts in place are pulling guesses out of thin air. In time, they recognise that venting the radiation is required, but the experts don't have a definitive idea what impact the venting will have. That fear of not only the unknown, but of the unpredictable in relation to a nuclear threat and a natural disaster is what makes the days such a captivating, unsettling watch. 
Yet one thing that can be confirmed within the shore is the level of radiation in the facility. The workers head into the plant across several episodes, attempting to make the necessary investigations and maintenance, such as opening the valves, and their detectors go completely berserk. Two workers exposed to the high levels scrub themselves down for decontamination, yet when they're analysed, the levels remain high and are told to scrub even harder. Radiation is an invisible hurricane which can ravage anyone in its path, even if they have to wait a while for the final result. And the Daze does a frightening job at demonstrating its devastation. The devastation itself in the show is often presented verbally. Yes, there are some unfair forgettable sights in the days surrounding the delving into the facility, including workers falling down hard-to-see manhole openings, which were blasted open by the water surge. Every step was a potential threat when wading through those waters, but for me, a lot of the fear factor of the days is verbal. Hearing the authorities discussing the disaster as it is ongoing, and seeing their reactions to the events, was enough to get under my skin and shake me to my core. Speaking of a shaken Core, the incident took a turn for the worst when the crews realised that if the necessary venting did not occur, the primary containment vessel would rupture and expel an enormous amount of radiation, multiple sieverts worth. Sieverts are the unit of measurement for the health risk of radiation, in relation to causing genetic damage and inducing cancer. Effectively, everyone who was present at Fukushima had a high chance of being broken down consequentially, no matter how how long the timescale? Currently, with the most recent information I was able to gather from various sources, the disaster itself has directly caused over 20,000 deaths. Most of these were from the earthquake and the tsunami, though around 2,500 deaths have been linked between the Fukushima Daiichi power plant and those evacuated from the area. The numbers vary depending on the information source, so apologies for any outdated information, but the bottom line is, the days of Fukushima have had a knock-on effect to an extremely large catalogue of people, and as the accident took place only 12 years ago, there are still very likely further long-term effects working their way through those who survived the accident. We do know that there was one death which was directly attributed to radiation-induced lung cancer four years after the events, with a further six workers diagnosed with cancer or leukaemia as of October 2020. I think what genuinely concerns me about the days and the force of radiation is how those who have been exposed to such high levels are able to acknowledge that they've been given a death sentence. You only need a brief amount of exposure and the switch can be flicked, activating the countdown. The damage is done and it's only a matter of time before the genetic corruption ravages the afflicted. The force is displayed in such a formidable way here, such as when a worker stands on top of the suppression chamber of the plant and it makes the bottoms of his boots Boots melt. This was one of my most memorable moments from the days, in terms of just how shocking it was to see. But another mortifying concept was that the knock-on threat of Fukushima was able to extend to those nowhere near the plant itself. As it is a power plant, it fueled the Japanese power grid. If at any point the plant had to be shut down, or there was a meltdown, those connected to that power source would suffer. Life support machines, heart monitors, key pieces of medical equipment would all be rendered useless inoperable. Even when Fukushima had to be evacuated because of the threat's radius, those who were in medical need within the radius were affected, from having to be moved. The elderly transported out of Fukushima died of hypothermia, medical afflictions deteriorated, people died of dehydration, even the relocation process caused injuries to the evacuated, the living conditions for them worsened, such as temporary housing and shelters, and so the death rate increased. The ripples of Fukushima extended outwards to a point where the incapability to provide proper medical attention was fatal. The quake, the floods, the radiation, the displacement of care provision, the evacuation process, it was a domino effect which was able to be traced directly back to Fukushima. Yet those who had the ability to soothe Fukushima back to normality were plagued with conflict. 
the back and forth debates between certain authorities, the crippling decision of which department workers had to stay and who could be evacuated, who would be in the skeleton crews, the debates of using seawater or freshwater or both to cool the reactors, and even then conflicting opinions rising to the surface causing friction. It's said in the days that humans are helpless when facing the power of nature, and even today, they are cleaning the mess caused by their arrogance. That's what we witness here, too many varying opinions, assumptions and guesses being the catalysts for key decisions. We even see Mr. Araki, a man who is asked to provide the knowledge for workers to perform some key tasks. Araki determines it would only be possible if he himself carried out the work, though as he is a subcontractor, they cannot agree to his offer. An expert has offered his vital assistance, yet a matter of legalities and paperwork prevents this from happening? What could have been had the pecking order been overlooked? Men were on the ground attacking this threat for days on end, hoping to get it under control, while in the meantime their families remained at home having to endure the heartache, wondering if their loved ones would ever return. We even get an emotional segment where the men email their families, where we get to see the humanity behind those who risked their lives to bring about some kind of order. Yet, even today, there is not complete order in Fukushima. The issues are ongoing, where even the trees are contamination sources. Though the Daiichi plant has been identified as stable as of December 2011, the decontamination of the surrounding area and the decommissioning of the plant itself will take decades to achieve. The aftermath of one of Japan's biggest disasters is still ongoing, and ever since that fateful day of the 11th of March, the nation has never been the same. Thousands of victims victims, all caused by the chaotic combination of nature's force and humanity's discoveries. The Days is a truly chilling viewing experience, which brings to the screen a terrible moment in human history, one which now finds itself in our nightmare fuel category. Thank you for watching this breakdown of the Days and of the Fukushima accident. I've been Connor from Unleash the Ghouls, and take care. Cheers.